dream about New York subculture when I was young. I imagine the Velvet Underground, Suicide, Richard Hell, places like CBGB's and Max's Kansas City. My idea of a party was the kind of Neverland Joe Buck and Ratso Rizzo stumbled into in Midnight Cowboy. Did any of that ever really happen? That was probably just the stuff of movies and urban folklore. But I still want to believe. The singer of an old Austin punk band called The Big Boys used to end their sets saying, Now y'all go start your own band. I decided to start my own parties. I'm a community organizer with records. I give them a place to go and a beat to dance to. I love technology, and that's why I play 45s. Little pieces of black petroleum. The most massive sound there is to shake a dance floor. Wild people and wild music, the eternal present, tonight. When the sun comes up, and we go back to our daytime selves, remains of the night before stick to us and change us.
thing is, I've never been arrested. It's kind of like a cross between you know, Hugh Hefner's old TV show, except without that King Cole. Well, yeah, I mean, ESG was from uptown, playing this music that kind of mixed the minimalism that was happening in the downtown composer scene with funk music and the kind of the birth of, of hip hop. All kinds of music kind of branched off out of that. ESG is real, you know, roots music in a funny way, as much as, uh, you know, like Chuck Berry or Alan Wolf were. You guys are back, or did you go anywhere? I don't even know. We, we, we went somewhere, but I think you took a much greater journey than any of us did. It's so wonderful to see you, Jonathan, and you look beautiful. But doesn't you look good? Come on! He's back! Yeah, he's back! Jonathan Tobin's back! Made, made, a, made a deal with the devil. Yeah. The Village Voice had uh, a poll of who is the quintessential New York artist, Madonna or John Spencer Blues What? What That's was that? Bullshit. I, th Madonna I, I think it's everyone, she knows, everyone it's knows it's Madonna, but she forfeits because she speaks with an English accent now. I think the first time I saw the Blues Explosion was, must have been 92 or so with Jesus Lizard at Emo's in Austin. I think I think that was a particularly fertile time for the Blues Explosion. We were definitely, you know, really coming together. I think all the influences were, were coalescing, you know, uh, hip hop and, and, you know, no wave and free jazz and definitely punk rock. We have taken a lot from New York City. It's crazy you've gotten to play with so many of the, the legends. We're very excited to be here because we, now we can add another legend that was, we get to play with the great ESG. Which and is, I, I know the one that people ask you the most about has got to be, what's it like to work with Weird Al? <laughs> He's a pro, man. No, it's, it's weird. He's a, <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. No, but really, R.L. Our, our Burnside, like, you made an album with R.L. Burnside, ass, ass pocket full of whiskey. How does a contemporary band get to make a record with an all-time blues legend? What's it, it like? We met R.L. and Kenny and Cedric in uh, the first time ever was at the old 930 Club in Washington, D.C. It was love at first sight between R.L. and us. I mean, it wasn't exactly love at first sight. It took a few days. I think the, the first, the the first night kick my ass. was going to be a fight. No one wants to kick my ass. We soon became fast friends and we ended up touring all over the world and, and made that record. And, and the record, the Ass Pocket record, really grew out of, you know, just hanging out and touring and playing together. You know, just seeing the way he interacted with the crowd, like his, his humanity and his, his, just, his heart connection. You know, I never saw crowds open up and just have so much fun. You know, like he was just wide open. He's like, he was like a Buddha. Well, I feel like I've always felt comfortable when we were working with the Beastie Boys or Beck or even Rufus Thomas, or that every, we're all kind of into being out there, kind of crazy and like comfortable there. And why did y'all choose to go baseless? It wasn't really, and this continues to this day, we don't really talk about things, you know, we just sort of do it. And at the time, none of us were playing bass, and we, it wasn't an impediment, you know, it worked fine for us, so we, we just kept doing it. Our work is very much based on sort of very, very gut level, instinct level, and, and very action oriented. We, we, we like getting up on the stage, we like making this kind of crazy noise, we like doing what we always do, freaking people out. What's your uh, quintessential New York rock and roll moment? Gigi yeah. Allen. Our practice space is quite close to where this old venue used to be. There used to be this old gas station on uh, 2nd Street and Avenue B. And, and at some point the gas station went out of business and it was transformed into this gigantic junk sculpture. And they used to have shows there. And there were, I think that's where the last G.G. Allen show last was. the G.G. Allen show. He, he died ran out of there. Running out on the street. Streaking collapsed. down Avenue B covered with feces and, uh, you know, butt naked. And then he died. Not funny. I actually hung out with G.G. Allen at the dugout. You know that bar, the dugout? There's a bar called the dugout. He's a very nice guy. Yo, 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 
Yo, yo, yo, yo, yo, yo, charm with the smile that stands by the middle of the mics, the beast, when the dead man's feet, and they could run the pull my mind that people you have CMC, trick of machine, sound like a minute, spit a heavy hitter, and I'm sending the remedy and none sicker. I'm set the record, even the roof is to the back of a beetle, and they crossed out, their mouth is still wouldn't stand out. The black prince and back off. I'm a dragon off, dragging off, drawing combinations like a chemist face, perch at the canvas, but sweet size could throw more slot and so dance contusions. Hold your eyes to keep your cottage blind until he made a flight for Narmi off, waiting like Dallas. Money to fall up until then My idiot spent the idiot The devil fires out with gasoline for me Phonetically, he take equal to speak The mother rappers pretend They both never content Bastard beat like a play We get some dance, so bad But the pen is in I can call them under my ride For longer people the best in my style I'll be dead face, relax Admiral atrocity This so ripping and rocky At the shows and shows I'd rather got and play flows with your rolls Why zeros? Last heroes Year to year From my feet that disappear Clear, clear that pollution from your ears it's open, let's see the born, 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 the swans, the clouds, the ooze, the eyes, the wild. The beat the thick of the crowds and turn it up loud. The test the best fresh is APC. The kids you don't want to diss. Let it pop or assist. Or they're defining your bliss. All the rappers they flee. Not touching the green. Fucking harder than walking wounded. A lot of little known names. Claim, claim, who you be. Feel like a home invasion. Tie you up and make a move. <laughs> Somewhere, in some social media forum of the future, someone is now typing the words R.I.P. NYC. They're typing in all caps, since that's the sole mode of written word. So the writing shouting, I can't believe that place is gone where I once did that thing. R.I.P. NYC. I'm not insulting the sentiment. My capacity for nostalgia is at least equal to what theirs will be in the future. All I want to tell them is what they know in their hearts, if not their status updates. That this world erodes and is gone. That even Chinatown will be replaced by one enormous Thai restaurant. I will go there. And I will tell my grandchildren I did lines of cocaine, where now sit the peanuts on their papaya salad. And they'll roll their eyes, since those aren't peanuts, because everyone is now allergic to peanuts. Along with nearly everything but cocaine. But I'll keep talking, since at my age, stories are what keeps me out of the home. I'll tell the story of the blackout of 2003. That sudden citywide liberation from the pretense cops and firemen were our friends. I'll start with me talking on a landline to a long-lost friend who'd gone from a Robitussin problem to an American military problem to a God problem, and how I was relieved as hell when the phone went dead. I'll say how I went into the streets and saw all these same problems had been erased citywide. I'll say how I walked across a bridge to work at a place called the Mars Bar, which somehow had a generator that apparently ran on nitrous. And I'll tell how the punks and the gays all sang as in one voice, sang into dying cell phones in a feverish search for the last working coke dealer in Manhattan, and how, huzzah, they found him, selling special blackout paste that if you closed your nostril long enough, definitely made something happen. And so how, for one night, unity, man. And I'll tell of how we hid dashed snow behind the bar when the cops showed up. And then I'll end with me and Black Harry crossing the Williamsburg Bridge together at 3 a.m. No one around, no lights, and well, obviously, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I don't think I've ever been injured. People have, uh, people have uh, tried to punch me on stage. Oh, no. Yes, that happens once in a while. I said, no! And a man that's free! I, I wrote 28 porn novels. In like, oh, my God! In, in, in like 28 weeks, though. Because <laughs> that was the job back then. Would you like to take a dog to a drive-in movie? I let a dog on your shirts. How would you like for your dog? I ended up playing with this one band, 
and we finished off of like a tour here and like my sister was living here and I was done with playing with them so I just decided to move. I literally took a cab from playing a show at David Letterman and then going straight to her apartment and that's how I moved to New York. Streetwise sensibility to New York music that's always been like that. Going back to like, you know, all the early doo wop groups and, and through punk rock and all kinds of stuff and hip hop. And there's a, a disillusionment, I think, that people come here to make it. And New York is a way rougher place than they anticipated. New York is a bitch. I think New York is a really difficult place because it's expensive. It's really expensive. And I guess it wasn't that way in the 70s. It was all affordable, which I think was why it was such a great place for bands to be. I think it's more difficult now. I mean, there's no scene now. We gotta wrap it up. You're from the South Bronx. Yes. And you're from the South, South Bronx in the 70s when, you know, Bombada and, yeah. you know, Grandmaster Flash, Cool Herc were having their parties. Did you, since you were teenage girls, did you have any exposure to that or were you removed from it? We were removed from it. That's why my mom bought us the instruments. Right. She didn't want us hanging in the park, you know, with all that, you know, stuff going on. She said, oh, no, 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 no. Because we would actually see it from the windows in the project. Yeah. And, you know, see it the DJ, yes. having a lot of parties. Yeah. But, Mom wouldn't let us know. <laughs> so, so then you you played a talent show, right? That was okay with that. Mama went along. To Absolutely. <laughs> oh, right. So, so she was like our chaperone while it was our unofficial manager. So then, then you went straight downtown of all places. It was an experience. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, we lived in the Bronx, which was like uh, hip hop, you know. 
cool things. And then, you know, we got down to, to Manhattan. It was like a whole different world. I mean, all kinds of different things were going on. We had the punk culture. We had, uh, uh, um, uh, like, uh, the different brands coming over from London. The, you know, the what they call no wave sounds uh, yeah, and stuff like that. So we, I mean, yeah. you know, we got to go down there and interact and play with them. And, and, and you know, they really loved us. Mm -hmm. Somehow, you were able to eventually open for Grandmaster Flash, or you could play with PIL, or you played with uh, The Clash. Yes. Or, but you also would go to Paradise Garage at, at the foundations of disco. Mm -hmm. How, what is it about ESG that is allowed past the door at every place <laughs> in every movement? I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember when, uh, when Soul Jazz Records collected some of the early stuff on uh, mm -hmm. South Bronx Story. Right. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I, I couldn't go anywhere without hearing ESG, you know. Isn't that fantastic? Yes. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and uh, how did all this stuff happen with, with the United Kingdom? And like you went there right with the New Order's uh, producer, Martin Hannett. Well, no, Martin Hannett was actually here in America. We had uh, opened for a certain ratio. And uh, Tony Wilson, uh, he was with them, and you know, I, I guess he was managing. And he said to me, you know, as we we're in sound check, he said, "Would you like to do a record?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure." But I didn't think he was serious. This was Wednesday, Saturday. We were in the studio with Martin Cannon in New Jersey, and I was like, "Oh wow," you know. So. And you recorded an, an incredible three-song EP that, that has Moody, yes. and has UFO. It's 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 iconic. And, and you know, an, good. an amazing sound. But everybody always wants to know, what, what's the UFO sound? How did y'all get it? Oh, okay, well, I mean, it's, it's the guitar with a lot of effect, but also, uh, it was some crazy things that, that Martin did secretly, so I don't know myself. <laughs> when was the first time that you heard yourself being sampled? Did you know about it beforehand? Well, no, no, actually the first time we were playing, it was either the Peppermint Lounge or Dance Interior. And they were showing like a uh, film clip on the wall. And it was African Bambada actually. Yes. And all of a sudden UFO came on and he was rapping. And I said, what the hell? <laughs> like, you know, this is my first time really seeing something like this. And I'm like, wow. And I'm like, how can you do that? How can you use my music? How can you use my record? So I yes. went off on, at the yeah. time, I'll manage yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, I don't know what you think about this, but isn't that cool? I said, no, it's not. <laughs> One thing I want to say was first of all, Growing up in the household we grew up in, James Brown was it, man. You know, James Brown was like, wow. So we wanted so much to sound like James Brown. He was so funky. But the only thing we wanted to do was take the bridge. <laughs> and, and I think the ESG song has that James Brown formula, take it to the bridge, take it to the bridge. But living in the South Bronx, it, it was a, a, a very Latin neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So you yes. get a percussion coming out of the park. Yes. Matter of fact, when I just wrote I Feel Tonight, Mm -hmm. One of the things I was reflecting back to in my memory was St. Mary Park and, and at night when we didn't have an air conditioner and had them screens in the window, <laughs> that's the kind of sound we would hear rolling out there all night. So yeah, South Bronx has been very inspirational.
had a terrible day. Have you ever really had a terrible day? Hmm. Let me think about that. Beh, c'è stato il trip di funghi del 2007. Ero a casa a provare per un'opera quando mi chiamarono due amici. Siamo andati a un tardi abusivo. Uno aveva funghi in biscotti, in stelle di mente cioccolato. Oh, oh, oh. Mangiane una punta, mi disse, sarà sufficiente, ma la cioccolata era deliziosa, così divorai molte stelle in estasi. I miei amici mi abbandonarono, camminai nelle neva fino a casa. Ero solo Guardavo le foto sul computer Lo schermo divenne un caleidoscopio E mi Lutuavano verso di me L'album si tintolava gente buffa Allora risi da morire Poi su internet in vita e molti sconosciuti non venne nessuno. Rivivevo molti momenti della mia vita velocemente e intensamente. Sotto caperti a fiori, in attesa della parata, e così via, perso il senso del tempo, e lavoravo la perdita. Voci diverse parlavano tramite di me, voci dei demoni. Per aiuto chiamo il mio amico Brian. My demoni presero il telefono. Hi Brian. Hi Brian. Hi Brian. Hi Brian. Hi Brian. Hi Brian. Basta demoni. Allora risi, che buffi! Entra in cucina con aria indifferente per tagliarmi. La laringe Presi un paio di forbici Presi un 
paio di forbici un coltello poi capì che era più urgente usar il filo interdentale lo usai con forza lo usai con forza fino a sorridere sangue pretty bad.
called Luna and before that a band called Galaxy 500. Okay. And we were all from New York but actually we went away to Boston mm -hmm. and that's where the band developed but we quickly found we were more popular in New York than we were in Boston. Of they pretty much liked us there. Stuff like that happened all the time. These mixes of uptown people and the downtown art scene uh, happening in the early 80s. It was an awfully cool time this mixing of cultures, hip-hop, from uptown in the Bronx and punk rock from downtown and all kinds of different people mixing and pretty soon you got Blondie with a, a hip-hop hit and that was just something that hadn't happened before. When I was 10, 11, my mom would drive me into, uh, into New York for ballet classes at the School of American Ballet and when we were driving down the West Side Highway uh, I would be picturing, I'd be like listening to Outkast or System of a Down, Eminem, and I would picture dancers uh, like jumping from light pole to light pole and then like jumping on a car and like surfing it. Wait, but you were not listening, I cried so many days. So Girl Walk works really well being in New York because there's so many different groups of people and types of places and there's so many different styles of dance in the movie and sometimes they match together, sometimes they really clash, right. but it's always really interesting to see that like interplay. Yeah, I direct and I edit. Um, it's really cool to be able to see both sides, like being in front and behind the camera, yeah. uh, and uh, I do, like I'll set up a camera and I'll flip the screen so I can see it and I can see the shot and see if it's going well with what's behind me, um, and I think it's really affected my dancing, um, because you can like dance and just make pretty movements, but if you're not telling a story or if you're not complimenting the space you're in like if I'm moving around uh -huh. what I'm next to it's a lot more interesting than if I just I'm in a, a vacuum I, I would commute from New Jersey to New York and back and I would take the bus uh, New Jersey Transit and um, I made a video on that on that bus. Uh, squeeze me. Um, I actually have uh, <laughs> I have a card. This is from Squeeze Me. Do I have it? Yeah, this is my Pokemon business card. <laughs> nice. No visible flaws and traces that familiar feeling No all that hits you when I spit like a owner place The way I shed the tear, I strike the heart like a hurricane Strikes just a blow of 40 sorrows This is disco for the departed I'm not for the multi-syllables Usually production is minimal Cause what he's saying is critical Caress me, like on kisses It's the heat from the pen The sins cannot you Hang you with a tofu Or the exploder The choice was in mind to make His obsession for the written word It's absurd, page use Like I had the memory This shit spread up But I'm the phone you have Kendrick Gall clubs are lies, slice a knife away Reds and feelings out at night On a Sunday seeking full of hell and never stand still Smile like a new adult but won't tell Your threats like death, your words are witness Minds are nothing but fresh in my Guess what it looks good on me Kill the pain with my curves and it feels so sexy If you ain't got nigga eyes to see You know that my body body sick is so damn sexy Guess what it looks good on me Kill the pain with my curves and it feels so sexy If you ain't got nigga Seems you think of those had a touch too much, very dust. The fuck with the thrust, 
drink your speed stroke Time release, chemotherapy, trick up from what I wrote And exploding ice is cold, and they're rusting Ain't my Austin, ain't your love, surrender Johnson There's still nothing you can say to him, but you can't say the same as him Well, be even more fun, the iron rains, ultimate rainy For your radio, cootie shy, and the box is shy Like a second needs a minute, and then though it comes an hour Like a rain drop gets messy, and the mud decides to take a shower Hit the stage, ready to rock, get paid, don't put your clock It's a virtual, so flow, let me die, tell us it, Jill Shots of blood, you kill and take a chill pill Down for deal, the ink from the grill is very ill Separates the quality from the swill One electric, you know the drill Dust your made in the tire Looking good and just a killer my Guess what it looks good on me Kill the pain of my furs If it feels so sexy If you ain't got nigga eyes to see You know that my body body is like so damn sexy Guess what it looks good on me Kill the pain of my furs If it feels so sexy If you ain't got nigga eyes to see You know that my body body is like so damn sexy You knew the New York I'm a New Yorker kid I used to shop a center for the doll and nylon squid Now the uniform consists of sock from Paul Smith Pants broken Shirts for Steven Allen Be a hearty for the shoes in the mirror I'm styling But I'm materialistic but my material is sick My holes in your fast and killing smart A thin injection to stop your heart A syringe in your retro case of the last thing you'll ever see Before you depart A grief and empathy is me Not to perks and mini Looms take and tendy David from the neck is a name On the but you will change Symphony getting from me perfect I push them like it's hot and pepper when it comes to the rhymes I did just slush since 1999 Your ears on my bucket bag, I was popping tags with ladies Didn't know now all y'all looking like the kid from five years ago That's what it looks good on me Kill the pain of my curves and it feels so sexy If you ain't got nigga eyes to see You know that my body body is like so damn sexy That's what it looks good on me Kill the pain of my curves and it feels so sexy If you ain't got nigga eyes to see You know that my body Shark with a pin, he's at it again. Percussion, fluid to music, I don't discuss it. I do it for breakout, and you grew to it. Out the lid, off the pin, off the grid. They says it's average, you wander like a llama spitting proper title. Hold on, on the phrase, and the kind of shit, and pass it like he's passing the record. Like a Honda got him seized, looking under the bed. He's a monster on acoustics. The evidence is overwhelming, and it's hard to dispute it. Tears and tongue, King's water, WrestleMania, Cabbage, Ruby, because he couldn't see me if they was the eyes out, and ain't no odds in my direction. It be a mirror with the vampire's gaze, no reflection. None of y'all stressing, rappers get into like a call disconnected on my train They can treat your best so easily It's one, two, three When I'm speaking like a crack in my bar Ziggy, you shit the keys Thinking that you're out of pool You spill That's how we're clear I'm a glue about things that rappers do That don't apply to you great nuts And change your heart for a heart Assuming heaven is your destination When you compare no comparison You and the mic equals almost But not quite It's like a cage match unfit Between a wild wild and infant When I spit on the shit No colostomy Spite the state of economy I sit for myself for the suffocate Then rinse it into my pocket To insulate my wallet It's added dollars to my billfold Never gets old It's nothing more perceptive than that it's such an obvious fact. The speaker freak a freak in the crowd, they turn it up now. Speaker freak a freak in the crowd, they turn it up now. Speaker freak a freak in the crowd, they turn it up now. Speaker freak a freak in the crowd, they turn it up now. I saw this band called The Bloods. This all lesbian Puerto Rican women playing this tough, like, punk funk stuff. Back then at CBGB's, they, used to, they didn't have six bands on it. They had two bands playing two sets. Right. So I remember seeing Richard Hell. Do you know Ian Traeger? He's like the guy from uh, He's a hotelier. He used to be the partnership for Studio 54. I never went to 54. I went to Danceteria. That Terry was a great club. My parents met in New York in 1976. Oh, really? Yeah. I got kicked out of Yankee Stadium because uh, I was dancing on the divider between the field and the seats. 
my friends were playing and this band Caribou was performing and Caribou. I yeah. yeah so I I was there and I, I got really cocky and I decided I was gonna go into their their green room and and like hang out with them and I passed them off a, a demo and six months later I was playing in their band
You know, I met Keith Richards one night up at the Apollo Theater at a James Brown concert. So like James Brown's playing one room and uh, it wasn't a good night for James Brown. He was kind of fucked up. He just got out of prison for PCP and I guess he was shooting up his wife's car. It was bad, right? And he, and he got out. This is like his big comeback show and honestly, not that good. So I kind of stumbled out to the lobby and Keith Richards was standing there smoking a cigarette and having a drink. And the crazy thing was I had seen Chuck, uh, the Chuck Berry movie that Keith Richards had made, you know, with him just a couple of nights before, Hail Hail Rock and Roll, and I thought it sucked. So I thought this was my opportunity to tell Keith how I felt. So I basically said, you know, Keith, I love you, I'm a big Stones fan, but I saw your movie and what the fuck are you guys thinking about? It sounded like shit, what the hell was going on up there? And he looked at me and he goes, you know, Chuck's a motherfucker. I love him dearly, but he's impossible to work with. Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> then I went and insulted the guy. His response was to buy me a drink. He said, what are you drinking? What are you drinking, Jack? At work, we sat, we sat around and drank Jack Daniels and smoked cigarettes for about 10 minutes until people started recognizing him. And it was like, what a gentleman, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, good night. One more time for the blues explosion. 